thanks very much for turning up to my session. Uh, I was kind of surprised I gave you this massive big room. I, I kind of gave my uh, presentation a really boring title, thinking that I wouldn't get too many people and I'd get a small crowd. So, um, so it's interesting to me how many people have attended this particular session. Um, I think this topic's a fairly relevant one. Uh, when Martin put up, like, asked for a show of hands for the number of teachers that were at this at the Moodle Moot, and uh, there's only like seven or eight that put their hands up, it makes me think that it is something that uh, Moodle needs to work on, and that is uh, appealing to the secondary uh, and primary sectors, um, because their needs in terms of Moodle are a lot different to, say, vocational education or, or university. Um, Going with Moodle was actually a very controversial decision in my school. Um, we, uh, I suppose there, there's this perception out there, oh, it's been around for so long that everyone's kind of looking for something, the, the next um, big thing. And there's a lot of competitive pressures there too. Uh, so our school's got uh, Office 365. They're trying to encourage teachers to use OneNote. Um, everything's about the cloud. Uh, and there's a lot of um, technology overlap. So we have a lot of tools that kind of um, uh, can achieve certain things that Moodle does. And so the argument is, oh, we don't, we don't need a learning management system. Um, but it's only when you don't have a learning management system that you truly realize that you do need a learning management system. Um, to put this into context, so our school's been uh, primarily putting its resources, uh, resources on SharePoint. Um, and with that situation in place, we had 10% uh, of staff uh, rarely uh, providing digital content and assessment to their students. We had over 50% of staff were actually just emailing uh, content and assessment to their students and collecting assessment that way as well. Um, our photocopying budget is enormous. And uh, as recently as a couple of weeks ago, um, the head of curriculum came out and said, hey, we need to stop photocopying. You need to put your resources online, um, which was controversial in itself. Um, even though we've had uh, Office 365 for a while, we've only had about 15% of staff uh, uptake on OneNote. And one of the reasons for that is uh, we're a bring-your-own-device school. So a lot of our staff are actually, and students, are using Apple. And uh, there's been issues with syncing to do with OneNote. Uh, plus, OneNote actually requires... I'll talk about this more later, uh, but OneNote does require a certain amount of content creation on behalf of your teacher. Uh, and if your teacher is someone who just wants to provide content, as in find and source content from elsewhere, they don't necessarily want to be uh, creating huge amounts of content. Um, so it, it really depends on the way the teacher wants to work. Uh, and then the end result of all this is we didn't know where people's content was. If you asked a staff member in my school where someone else's content was, they would have no idea. Uh, so it's hard to collaborate with staff at a school if you don't know what they're doing. Um, and, and communication with the students is inhibited in that way. Okay, so... Um, Choosing an LMS, uh, and we went through a two-year process in, in terms of looking at uh, learning management systems, but it really is a, a high-stakes decision. So uh, it took a lot of effort and a lot of meetings and a lot of committees and a lot of uh, reviews to make a decision. We knew what we wanted to achieve with that, with the learning management system, though. Uh, we want to get more online space. So places like uh, co-curriculum had nowhere to put their content. Um, places like counselling and um, even staff PD. Like, for us being able to provide professional learning to staff, we had nowhere to put our content other than SharePoint. And SharePoint had been collectively shunned. Um, better browsing structures. So if we can provide those online spaces for classes and people can put their content there, then we can find each other's content. Uh, and then... I suppose the thing that really appeals to us about Moodle is the fact you could easily uh, update, hide, and show your content, uh, whereas SharePoint was like almost like a five-step process just to uh, hide something in SharePoint. Alternatively, the easiest way was to delete it and you'd never find it again. Um, so for all these reasons, uh, Moodle seems a good fit. 
Um, and I suppose the big thing is that once you have a learning management system, then your staff are then exposed to those uh, ICTs that they may have not had exposure before. So instead of having to tell a teacher, well, hey, look, this is not possible uh, with SharePoint or this is not possible with OneNote, uh, we can now say, well, no, we've got a space where we can achieve a lot of that stuff, or perhaps we can find a plugin that might suit your needs. So the range of what we can provide uh, teachers uh, with it has, has grown exponentially. Uh, so we went ahead and started uh, setting up our Moodle site, and um, <sighs> such a hard process starting from scratch. I mean, it's funny because I've, I've worked in the industry and, and I've worked as an LMS administrator for another college uh, or a learning designer for Griffith University, but I've never actually had to set up uh, a learning management system from, from the get-go. Uh, and there's so many... I suppose the strength of Moodle is that it's so highly customizable, but it's also a weakness in a way that um, being so customizable means that it's actually really difficult to customize or to get all the settings correctly. Um, we decided to go through an external provider, which is Catalyst, um, and they've been great. Um, in fact, I think uh, not only have they been very professional in the way they've dealt with us, but they've actually oftentimes saved us from ourselves. So um, we'd have ideas of different plugins we want to install and so on. It was just nice and comforting to have someone who knew what they were doing and could say, no, I don't think you should do that yet, or maybe you should consider this in instead. Um, but it has been a really, really difficult process. And I'm not going to talk too much about it um, in this particular presentation, otherwise I'd go for hours. Uh, but there are a lot of tasks that needed to be achieved. Um, and I'm happy to say a lot of that is still ongoing, but we're getting there. OK, and that's just a quick look at my site. Um, one of the things I really wanted was that uh, the carousel kind of thing, where we could advertise school events. And we've got announcements on the front page so that uh, teachers can put up announcements and competitions and videos, things how we can actually celebrate the things our school community are doing that you could never do before. So we've got like, there was a theatre sports day and the, and the kids have to act in like uh, our theatre kind of mock, mock drama things and um, we put the video and embedded the video on the front page of Moodle. So all of a sudden you've got this massive spike in the number of students coming to the site and the staff as well and their parents. OK, so in terms of the users of our K-12 LMS, um, look, it, I'm going to focus primarily on teachers because uh, in my view, I know this is going to sound weird, I am a teacher, but, uh, and we always talk about, oh, it's all about the students, but for us it's actually um, getting teachers using the LMS has to be the first step. If teachers aren't using your LMS, then there's no way that students are going to be using it. Well, there's no way that parents are going to be using it. Uh, so teachers are the primary user. And in our school, where there's been a whole lot of different opportunities for teachers to do other things, that, that has to be the, the, the biggest requirement or the biggest priority for us. After that, students uh, and parents. And one of the things I'd say there is uh, parents, <laughs> it's all about the parents these days. It's all about the parents. Um, and, and constantly you're asked by the school, oh, can parents see the assessment? Or can parents see the deadline? Uh, or can parents see this? Or parents say that? It's all about pleasing your parents. Um, it's almost an obsession, but it's something to keep in mind uh, in terms of future revisions of, of Moodle and, and so on. OK, so in terms of now that we've developed that structure and we've installed the software, um, it's really about teacher adoption. Um, and this is where uh, I brought up this technology acceptance model, um, which shows some of the factors at play. The two I'm going to look at is um, attitudes of teachers and also the expectations of teachers. And then there's task technology fit. Uh, it's really important that for us, if we want the LMS to be used, then we need to provide um, a really nice fit to the tasks that teachers want to do. Uh, so who are our teachers? Um, we're actually a very traditional school, uh, and we have a lot of teachers who've worked there for over 20 plus years. In fact, almost every um, teacher meeting, we have someone get another certificate for working over 20 plus years. And that's amazing, but 
Um, you could say that our teachers have a fairly low level um, of ICT literacy uh, for that reason. Great teachers, really, really good teachers, um, but they haven't been exposed to a learning management system unlike other schools. So they don't have a knowledge of what's out there or what they can do with it. Um, and some of them are re nearing retirement age as well. So um, and I'm sure I'll be like this too. The closer you get to retirement age, the less you really want to learn new things. Um, and that's, I'm not knocking them in that way, but if you, you're going to retire next year, then you're not really that interested in particularly learning something completely new that's going to affect the way you teach. We also have some younger teachers too. So there are a lot of uh, up and coming younger teachers. And because we haven't had an LMS, they have actually gone out outside our system and found things that suit what they wanted to do. So this is where we're talking about um, task technology fit, finding the best technology that suits the task. And this is where it's really difficult for us because on one hand, having a learning management system, you're providing more of a holistic approach where you can actually um, you can provide a service in all these different areas, but then people have other choices that might do better in those areas. So how do you encourage a teacher to do online assessment using Moodle rather than using something like Starlap? And that's something that uh, some of the younger teachers are using at the moment. And it's actually really, really user-friendly to create an assessment, but it's outside the Moodle system. And then how do we cope with that? So for us, we're trying to bring these ICTs inside the umbrella of using Moodle as opposed to just saying it's, it's just one against the other. It doesn't have to be that way. Having a learning management system means that you have the ability to integrate ICTs or LTIs and into your um, course sites. And, and that's what we've told teachers. Uh, it doesn't matter what you use, so, matters, uh, so, so long as you link that to your Moodle class site. And I think that has to be the first step. Um, just quickly about OneNote, I think we're talking about the whole content creation. Um, that is one of the things that has been one of the frustrations of teachers who have been using Moodle, is that uh, it's not the same as a tertiary sector. Um, tertiary lecturers might put up one or two things a week. Um, and they often have help from learning designers and so on. For teachers, they don't have that much help. Um, and so they actually, oh, sorry, I'm going too far. Um, I'll just show you, sorry, I'm running out of time, so I'll quickly move on. But you can see this is an example of one teacher and what they do in one term of work. Now, that's great that they're using Moodle to do that, um, but that's one term. Now, imagine multiplying that by four. Or if you, and that was, that's a teacher, I saw a teacher who had so many links that their Moodle page just dragged on forever, and you're looking at about maybe 200 items. It's far more than you would expect from a tertiary teacher. Um, so that's why for us it's, it's really important that we teach uh, teachers how to group their content. Um, I talked, I spoke last night uh, or in the afternoon session to Martin about how we'd like to section up the content. Um, being able to put labels easily into the page and headings and uh, kind of descriptions of items. Uh, that has been something that I've really been trying to drum into my teachers uh, this last semester. Um, but it is something that I think the usability in terms of Moodle has to improve in because it's not as easy as it should be. And uh, a lot of teachers have no idea at the moment how to add an item description or how to add a label. All right, I've, I've gone way over time, so I might just stop there. Oh, no, I've got a minute left, sorry. Um, and then this is probably the, for beginning teachers, and again, I didn't see this because I've used learning management systems a lot before. Um, for the beginning teacher, their first middle site, uh, I've had to show them how to turn editing on. Uh, I can't remember how many times I've had to go and see a teacher and say, this is how you show editing, turn editing on, and they've had an ah. It'd be so much easier if there was just an option saying turn editing on. Um, the actions menu, I show it to teachers and their eyes just kind of glaze over. Um, too many options, too many options. 
And this is where it's different from learnability to usability. Usability, we talk about um, the functionality that you can provide users. And for a lot of Moodle people who've been using Moodle for 10 plus years, um, then you're all about fine tuning the settings or adding the setting that you didn't have. But learnability is about providing the user who's never had an experience of it. How do we provide them with an interface that helps them achieve uh, exactly what they're looking to achieve in, in the, most, the least amount of steps possible? Because for our teachers, they will start looking, especially the younger ones, they will look elsewhere uh, if they can't find uh, a nice way of doing things. OK, um, would anyone like to ask me any questions at all? Yep. Hi, Brad. Um, really interesting presentation. I was just wondering, uh, are you trying to migrate your teachers away from using file-based resources and act into first-class act, um, activities like uh, the lesson and assignments and, and other things? Uh, so am I trying to migrate them away from... From, oh, file, from files, like just using Moodle as a file storage mechanism? It's, you know, I'd, I'd really love to. Um, I've now had this, just recently, there's been this massive push for progressive marking. Um, and it kind of scares me because we basically had a change of leadership in our school and um, the new people came in. It's all about providing uh, instant feedback that parents can see. And that involves uh, also long-term grade storage. So this is where technology overlap is a real danger because uh, the student management system has said, well, we offer progressive, a progressive mark book that parents can see. And if a kid doesn't submit an assignment, the parent gets notified. Now, that functionality isn't inside middle at the moment. So as of a few weeks ago, I was told, well, we're going to move the assessment and the assignment collection outside of Moodle into the student management system. And, and that kind of defeats the whole point of having that holistic approach. What I can say is that a lot of teachers have started, and I haven't encouraged them for that reason, but a lot of teachers have started using the assignment collection tool of their own accord, and they love it. They love the rubrics they can add. They love the feedback they can give. Um, it's heartbreaking to me that next year they're going to be told they have to use the student management system instead. Um, so what's this space? I'm not sure how it's all going to go. Um, but as I was saying, parental influence in a high school is growing, and it grows every year. Um, and, and that's something Moodle's going to have to take into account. So do you give access to Moodle to the parents? Yes, yeah, so we've got, um, we've got it set up. Uh, so we've got, um, we've actually got Moodle integrated with Office 365. So all Office 365 users in our school access the learning management system. And it's working quite well. We then, uh, by using a field in the parents profile, because parents are users in that system, they can then they're attached to the actual students using the, ment the mentees plugin. So you can see down the bottom here uh, your child's profile. So a parent is linked to the, to the child's profile. Um, so that's working. What we found was that parents, however, couldn't see the assessment dates of student items. They could see a student's course through that mentees link, but they couldn't actually see uh, the assessment or the events for that particular course. So we've had to hack the course, the, the core code, to make those events publicly available. Um, but it's not as nice as it should be. Uh, and it's the same, the actual user profile that parents see, it could be made to look a lot nicer for parents. Um, but saying that, there's been a lot of positive feedback from parents who can, for the first time, they've got a, a, the ability to see galleries and videos of their kids doing things. Uh, and co-curriculum in particular in Moodle has just taken off. We have got, um, sorry, I'll, I'll take 30 seconds. I just want to show you this quick graph. Uh, We're just up. Yeah. So you can see we've got 40,000 hits, and a lot of those parents coming along to see what their students are doing. All right, I'll finish there because I'm getting kicked off. <laughs> Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. You're going to